Neglected tropical diseases are no longer neglected. Pharmaceutical companies have signed up to an initiative with the World Health Organization, major charities and research groups with the aim of wiping out or at least controlling some of the world's deadliest conditions. Is their target date of 2020 realistic? What's in it for them? This is Inside Story. Hello again and welcome. I'm James Bays. It's been billed as the largest coordinated effort yet to fight some of the planet's most debilitating diseases, diseases that until now have been largely ignored. What are known as neglected tropical diseases affect about 15% of the world population every year in the poorest countries of the world. A new plan has been drawn up to combat 10 of 17 neglected tropical diseases over the next decade. The plan involves a dramatic increase in drugs and treatment programs. Drug makers have been criticized in the past for not doing enough to fight diseases diseases of the poor as they concentrate instead on conditions more prevalent in rich nations such as high cholesterol. So what are these neglected tropical diseases? The term refers to a range of bacterial, parasitic and worm infections which flourish in areas with poor water quality and inadequate sanitation. They can cause disfigurement, disability, organ damage and often death. The neglected tropical diseases affect at least one billion people, that's one in seven of us, and kill more than half a million each year. Take, for example, river blindness. It affects around 18 million people in sub-Saharan Africa and has blinded more than a quarter of a million people. Another one is elephantitis. Around 120 million people suffer from the disease, mainly in Africa and Southeast Asia. It's disfigured and crippled about 40 million people. Whereas big diseases like HIV AIDS attract big money, the U.S. is spending 20 28 billion dollars this year alone neglected tropical diseases are well neglected the US gives just a hundred million dollars towards them other countries even less the great tragedy is that the average cost of treating and eliminating these diseases is just 50 US cents per person per year so is the target date of 2020 realistic to wipe out some of the world's deadliest conditions to answer this question we're joined by a panel of experts in london dr lorenzo savioli director of the department for the control of neglected tropical diseases at the world health organization also in london uh, mario otilio he's associate director of global health policy and public affairs at the international federation of pharmaceutical manufacturers and associations and in geneva dr tito von schoen angera director Director of Médecins Sans Frontières, or Doctors Without Borders, and their access campaign. Welcome, gentlemen. Can I start with you, Lorenzo? We've a lot of information there in our intro introduction. I'd like you, please, to paint a picture for our viewers. Tell us what some of these diseases are and how damaging they are to the planet. Well, these are the, the diseases of the poorest people in the world. In fact, some people have said that these are the diseases of the neglected populations. One billion people in, uh, infected, one, people, one million people, billion people are affected by these infections that cripple and that are strictly linked with the underdevelopment of the, of the developing world. And, and, and that's the reason why we, we know for sure that where these diseases are affecting people, there will no, be no possibility of true development and economic growth. And in these days of, uh, of crippled economy, I, I think addressing them and the response that we have heard from, these, uh, from the companies to do that has been uh, the right, uh, the right uh, response to assure that a real true growth in the economic world uh, of the future. Lorenzo, just quickly, tell us about one or two of these diseases so our viewers can get an idea of exactly what these conditions are. Yes, you, you have mentioned few, so I will mention another one that is the one that in fact I've been working in, in, in sub-Saharan Africa before, before going to WHO, that is schistosomiasis, bilarciosis is also called. Uh, you have heard yesterday that uh, uh, at last we have 250 million tablets uh, available every year, 100 million doses that will be for treating this disease that is very difficult to be, um, is associated with uh, blood in urine or uh, liver cirrhosis. It, it cripples people in adult age 
and it affects 200 million people, uh, mostly now in sub-Saharan Africa. It's a terrible disease. Very little, uh, the visibility of it is very, is, is not shown so much. You have uh, hematuria, you have blood in urine for many, many years that in many countries is considered a normal thing of growth uh, in, the, in the young boys as a menstruation of, of boys in many endemic countries and it cripples you when you're an adult and you have to look after a family and it cripples and it kills uh, hundreds of thousands of people every year. Okay, Mario, you represent the pharmaceutical companies. I'd like you to tell us why the pharmaceutical companies have signed up to this new plan. We'll discuss it in more detail as uh, the discussion goes on, but summarizes for us now as well uh, the details of this new plan. Absolutely, thank you very much. Well, I mean, uh, the research-based pharmaceutical industry delivering innovative therapies and promoting access to medicine uh, around the world has signed up to this initiative because actually our main mission is improving global health. And improving global health goes really well with improving societies, pro providing healthier um, um, environments and, and fostering also development of communities. We have signed also because we are a truly believer in a multi-stakeholder approach and if you want, you know, this is, this is really an initiative that is putting together many, many partners, the pharmaceutical industry, the World Health Organization, the civil society, the donors country, the endemic country. We, are, we, we truly believe in this and, and we are happy to join this because there is commitment from everybody to get very quickly to this finish line. Tito, can I ask you, you represent MSF, Médecins Sans Frontières, who's often there at the front line of uh, medical care. This sounds like wonderful news, but do you have any reservations? I think it's excellent that we have a very high level event and effort to, to address this really truly neglected disease that affects some of the poorest people on, on, on this planet. But while I think this is good, I, I, I would have some reservations that, you know, we can, that everything is, is under control and uh, that donations are the, are the, the only needed answer for, for every of the problems. The different diseases are different. I mean, if you look, for example, at, at visceral leishmaniasis, which is a disease that affects 350 to 500,000 people a year and kills 50,000, uh, particularly in South Asia and, uh, and East Africa. I mean, th this is a disease that uh, is actually very difficult to treat. Um, you have uh, a number of, of, of drugs uh, requiring injections. Um, it's lengthy, there are side effects. There, there's one drug by uh, uh, amphotericin by, by Gilia that at least in, in South Asia you can give in, in one shot. Um, but that drug is, uh, is quite expensive. It's at $18, at even at discounted price, it's too expensive. Um, and there's a donation, but that donation is, is rather limited. And, uh, and we need also much better newer drugs um, to address the disease, uh, particularly also in, in, in East Africa, and oral treatment. So, so that there's much more to do, really, in terms of expanding, ensuring good programs and for some of the diseases really having new tools to really address them and make, make progress towards those targeted in, in 2020. Well, we've heard the names of some of these diseases uh, already, all these medical terms, but of course where, with these medical terms comes the human cost. And I think it's probably time we paused our discussion for a moment and showed you that human cost in northern Uganda where the health services are still scarce. Elephantitis is a widespread disease that causes parts of the body to swell, but those who suffer from the disease are sidelined because of the lack of health care and education. Al Jazeera's Malcolm Webb traveled to Alebtong district in northern Uganda to meet some of the victims. Helen's been in constant pain for over 10 years. She suffers from elephantiasis caused by a parasite that makes her leg deformed. It's easily prevented and treated, but she's never been given any medicine. For years, she thought it was caused by evil spirits until a visiting social worker explained the disease. I thought I was cursed. I went to a witch doctor and paid him one chicken and one goat. He made cuts in my leg with a razor blade and put a frog in the wound. It just became worse. The World Health Organization says more than 120 million people suffer from elephantiasis worldwide and it's one of the most common causes of disability. It's not fatal, but it hurts. It stops people from working and victims are often ostracized by their community. 
Billions of dollars have been spent on killer diseases like HIV AIDS and malaria, but health officials say elephantiasis is neglected because it's less well known and so it's harder to get funding. If we go to the international community and I am seeking funds for elephantiasis and you are seeking funds for malaria, you will get more funds, quick funds than me because they don't see it as a problem. Like malaria, elephantiasis is also spread by mosquitoes. Pools of water like this are ripe breeding grounds for the type of mosquito that spreads the disease. It takes thousands of bites for infected mosquitoes to become ill, and it's the dense mosquito population in tropical climates that can make the disease endemic. But also like malaria, prevention is not as simple as handing out mosquito nets. Here, a free net is used as a chicken pen. The worst affected communities are poor and simply don't see things in the same way as the charities trying to help. Breeding much needed animals to eat can take priority over preventing a disease that the community barely understands. And so education is also crucial. Fedi Among travels around rural villages teaching people about health issues. She says elephantiasis ruins people's lives. Aside from the pain and the disability, the humiliation can be unbearable. Before somebody stigmatizes you, you already stigmatize yourself because, you know, this person is looking at me. He's looking at how flies are falling on my leg. He's looking at how my leg is woozy, how my leg is swelling, how it is in a sh poor shape. The parasites in Helen's leg can be simply killed off with medicine, but she says the volunteer who's meant to deliver the drugs to the villages has never turned up. Without help, Helen and millions of others with elephantiasis will live with the disease for the rest of their lives. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Aleb Tong District in northern Uganda. Disturbing pictures, disturbing stories there in Malcolm's report. Lorenzo, we heard in that report, elephantitis already can be treated. There's the treatment for it. We've heard of your new plan, but why hasn't this happened before? Why hasn't the treatment reached these people before? The problem with, I think also the colleague from MSF has mentioned it, uh, these are the drugs that have been uh, developed for, uh, for the tropical diseases. Some of them are quite obsolete and unfortunately we don't have uh, wonderful drugs for instance another disease that is complicated to be treated is African trypanosomiasis sleep in sickness and and I think we in, in spite of this we need to have access also to, to these drugs but the other drugs are very the very safe the very very um, good drugs like praziquantel for schistosomiasis or albendazole and ivermectin for onco and, and lymphatic filariasis. The thing is that these drugs for human use have been market failures. And that's, that's the problem that these drugs have because the people, even if they cost, as you have said at the beginning, very few cents uh, treatment, in spite of that, the, the people that are affected by these diseases don't have the money also for even paying this little few cents to buy these drugs. So the only way to access, to assure access of these drugs for the poor people affected is having a dialogue and finding solutions together with the private sector. And this is what we have engaged ourselves for the last many years. And MSF, for instance, has been working very closely with us also in the distribution of some of these drugs to the, to the most neglected populations in rural areas, in remote areas. And, and that's the way that things have to be done. We all have to come together to assure that this is happening. And the private sector yesterday, the response by the, the call by Bill Gates and the response by the private sector has been absolutely crucial to assure that this happens. Tito, can I ask you, do you think some of the people, like the people we saw in that report, should have had treatment before now? We heard that it was a failure of the market, but should really the care of these people be left down to capitalism? Yeah, but what we really, I mean, we need to look at all parts of, of the puzzle to, to really m make things work. And uh, I mean, if, if you look, for example, at, at, at sleeping sickness, um, that, that was just uh, mentioned as an example, um, that's which are uh, particular in, in parts of uh, c uh, Central Africa. And there, there's a very effective program that the government has in the de uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. But it has been defunded. It has been under f had funding support from the Belgian government since 97. But now it's running out of money. So it's uh, that kind of support that needs to be there. Um, 
donations can play a part and if you look at sleeping sickness you know there's a donation that is is there that, that works uh, quite quite well and it's a you know it's a specific this market where, where donations can have a place but we also, we, again, it's a disease where we need much better tools. We need a better diagnostic so you don't have to stick a needle in, in people's back. And, and, and drugs that you can give by mouth and not over 14 days by, by injections. So there are different things need to be addressed. And I, I welcome that you know, the industry is giving, uh, continues to give, give those donations. But I would really challenge them also to do more in research and development. I mean, we know that only 1% of the drugs that have been developed since the mid-70s have been for all the tropical diseases and TB put, put together, together, let alone this, this most neglected diseases. And we don't see this picture has significantly changed at all. Mario, you should do more is the message from MSF. Yes, uh, well, I mean, uh, I, will, I will actually divide the pictures into two. I mean, uh, I, it, it, it goes without saying that uh, further research and development is needed on, on these uh, most neglected diseases. And currently, our member companies are working on at least more than 80 uh, projects in, uh, for development of, of new treatments, looking at areas uh, which, as Lorenzo and, and Tito were mentioning, are, are extremely complicated. Let's look at dengue, for instance. Um, these projects are actually happening not only alone in, in our labs, but in partnership with, with organization, so-called product development partnerships. And, and yesterday, the news was about also new commitment of our, some of our member companies with, uh, with the NDI, for instance. But, um, you know, the, the other side of the picture also to, to shed a positive light is, is really the 14 billion treatment, uh, uh, this number that has been announced yesterday by the IFPMA and by our member companies, uh, which are going to be uh, donated actually um, uh, in this decade and until 2020, addressing actually nine of the neglected diseases that constitute the 90 percent of the, of the overall burden. And Mario, how much are your companies, the companies that you represent, how much money are they putting into this? Because I couldn't find that figure anywhere. How much is the total? Well, I'm afraid I don't have that information, but what I do, I, I do know is, is really the, the value to global health that this massive initiative is actually bringing. Uh, again, uh, it's unprecedented. It's probably the largest coordination effort in this domain. It involves a, a different range of stakeholders and, you know, can be also a model to face global health challenges in the future. You know, global health is an extremely complex uh, matter that needs the collaboration and the engagement of all. Well, we hear that the total figure from the charities and the governments being put up is 785 million. Lorenzo, most of that seems to be coming from the bill, or the majority, the biggest chunk, from uh, the Bill Gates Foundation. Would this have happened without the founder of Microsoft? I think the Bill Gates, the Gates Foundation has been quite uh, pioneering. Uh, from the very, very beginning of the foundation uh, 10 years ago, and WHO has been working with them at the very beginning when they put tropical disease, and we developed even the, the idea of neglected tropical diseases with, with many people in, in the foundations themselves, uh, has been crucial. But I think we should not forget the DFID has announced just uh, a week ago um, 245 million pounds. Uh, the USAID is putting significant amount of money, but there's Spain, the other countries, and the endemic countries themselves, they're putting money themselves. And, and I think this is all important. I would like to come back to, to the issue that you were saying before about the fact that capitalism is not allowing these diseases to be treated. Let's be very, very clear. These people affected, these neglected populations, uh, have very little voice. They don't vote. Most, a lot of them, unfortunately, are illiterate. And I, when I was working, 30 years ago in, in East Africa myself, we, we, I, I, I started working in, in, in tropical diseases with a drug that was just available, Praziquantel, and it took us 30 years to assure that now we have the amount of Praziquantel, we will have the amount of Praziquantel to treat all the schistosomiasis, uh, the amount of children at risk in Africa to treat them. Is this fair or not fair? Of course it's not fair. But it's not the world is not fair. That's what, what it's all about. And that's why we're here to try to find solutions that are pragmatic and constructive.
And there must be a balance also with innovation. So we need to have access of the drug we already have, and we have to be innovative to assure that the one cubic meter necessary today for treating uh, of drugs for treating uh, sleeping sickness becomes a pill, the, or the same two and a half pills to treat uh, schistosomiasis in a child. That's what we have to work. So on one side access, on the other side we must assure innovation. And that's the balance between all the different groups that have to work together. Tito, do you think we're going to see that innovation? Because another expert that Al Jazeera spoke to today said that many of these products were byproducts of other products that were being developed, or some were even veterinary products, this, this new work that the pharmaceutical companies are offering, these new donations. Yeah, I, I think much more needs to be done on, on the innovation front. I mean, I, I totally agree with my colleague from WHO that you know, for some some of the drugs we definitely have and we, we need to get them out there. Um, but on the innovation thing, it's, it's not enough. I mean, it's, it's fine that drug companies announce opening up their compound libraries or they collaborate uh, with uh, the Drugs for Neglected Disease Initiative. But, but if, if, if you look at what, what, what is really invested there, I mean, the a report last year showed that for the diseases that we're talking about here, that were talked about the conference uh, yesterday, the industry only invests uh, at $20 million a year, which is, which is really very, I mean, it's, it's tiny. As, and because we think this is such an important negle neglected field, um, I mean, as, as a humanitarian organization, we even put $5 million in, into drug development there because we think it's just not going, going, going fast enough. And so if we, if we want to reach the targets, I think for some of, of, of the diseases, the, the ambitious targets that WHO has set can be reached with, with some of the tools that, that we have. But for others, we definitely need, uh, and, and need, need much better ones. And, and I would really challenge the, the, the drug companies to, to go further there. I, I think the donations are, uh, you know, we, they're, they're good and they're, they do, they're, they're, they really help. But I mean, also, they have to be put in perspective. Um, I mean, if, as you say, if uh, a drug like, like ivermectin, I mean, this, this, this is a drug that has been highly profitable for, for, for decades, almost uh, makes it probably a billion dollars in sale every year on the veterinary side. So uh, I, I think it's good we get it donated on the human side, but I mean, I, I think that generosity has to be put in that kind of uh, perspective as well. And maybe, Mario, we should put your generosity also in the perspective of the amount of money you spend on marketing a year, an estimate of about 30 billion US dollars. This is a tiny amount compared to that, isn't it? Well, let, let me quote, uh, let me quote uh, uh, you know, another report that was published early this year on, on spending on uh, the diseases we are speaking about. It's around 500, and, and it was uh, uh, listing the industry like the second largest world funder, actually, of research and development after the, uh, the U.S. government. And I also would like to mention an initiative. I think Tito was uh, actually referring to that, uh, that had took place um, late last year in, in WIPO, in the World Intellectual Property Organization, with a new initiative called the WIPO Research, where actually many companies have put at disposal of, public, um, uh, of the public, of, of, of researchers around the world, not only intellectual property, but also knowledge, which, will, which is very useful um, to carry further new, uh, new research. Overall, I will say, uh, if you consider the whole spectrum of diseases, this is an industry that is you know, surpassing more than 60 billion, definitely, a year in terms of research and development. Lorenzo, I'd like you to have the last say. This initiative is dealing with 10 of these tropical diseases, but the World Health Organization, your body, says there are 17. What about the other seven? Quick answer, That's please. Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. We, 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 we consider that for a set of the 17, we can, by 2020, really uh, reach some very significant... We use words very carefully. So when we speak of eradication, we mean zero transmission. They will be wiped out. And so we have put two of these diseases for complete eradication. One is guinea worm, to which I would like to remember, we don't have a drug, we don't have a diagnostic, and we don't have um, a vaccine. And it's, Thank you, it's going to be wiped out.
Okay, well, thank yes. you, Lorenzo. And Thanks to all our guests. Sorry, we have to end there. Dr. Lorenzo Savioli in, Ge in Geneva, Dr. Tito Van Schoenangra, and also in London, Mario Ottilio. And thanks to you for joining us here on Inside Story. As ever, we want to hear from you by email. Thoughts, comments, suggestions, and complaints should be said to insidestory.net. Remember to join us next time. I'll be back in this seat again in 24 hours' time from now. Bye bye.